What up guys, it's Corey Boutwell here. Thank you so much again for tuning into these podcasts and choosing to live the best life as possible and using all of these different tools to become the best version of yourself. I'm so proud of you guys. Thank you thank you so much for listening and thanks for the messages. You guys send me so many kind messages. If you guys are actually interested, you get any value from these podcasts or if anything resonates with you at all, please just chuck us a like, chuck us a subscribe, leave a review on Apple Podcasts and share on your story. My goodness, I would absolutely love that because you know we gotta we gotta get this podcast and this good information out there somehow, and that is the main way to reach it. That's for sure. Um, also, we've just hit number 150 on the health and fitness trends for Apple Podcasts and the health and fitness in Australia. So we're working our way up, and that's thanks to you guys. Thank you so much for everyone who leaves a review on Apple Podcasts. That's what's doing it. That's what's doing it. So thank you so much for that. Also, just a few little things. So currently I have a bunch of coaching available and basically like why would you want to get in the co- in the coaching is if you want to optimize your life, if you need accountability, if you want to feel and perform at your peak like all the time, if you ever feel like you're just struggling with life, you may have had some success, you may have had some other things and you're like, okay, it's time for me to really invest in myself self now, do the personal work so I can figure out what's extremely important for me and sprint to that and stay on track for sprinting towards that, send me a message. Just go to coreyboutwood.com, go through the application and we can jump on a call and I can get onto a strategy call for you. All my initial calls are free and they go for like 15 minutes and we go through and I'll just plan out a whole bunch of things for you. So do that if you like and we can figure some real cool stuff out. Also, Best of the bone, bone broth is the best bone broth. I've been drinking it every single morning, every single day. It has all essential vitamins, minerals, omega threes. It's got all so much good stuff in there. And best of the bone are the best one. They do so much of the non bad stuff of what to do for the bone broth. They they roast it, well not roast it. They cook it over seventy two hours, and it doesn't have any heat or it doesn't have any high pressure therapy like a lot of other bone broths. And you can get. 12% off if you go to the link down below and you click that link or you head to my Instagram and you click on the link in my Instagram and you can get 12% off, So, which is awesome. Definitely give that a crack. Best of the Bone Bone Broth is so good. I absolutely love it so much. Also, I have a recipe ebook and if you want to learn how to use these bone broths and make certain bone broths and like, how do I actually do these and make these? That's all in there too. I've also got meal prep strategies, how to eat extremely healthy, what natural foods to use, how to actually meal prep, all of those different things. They're all in the recipe ebook. I spent so much time figuring out what are the best, best ingredients to have. And I put them in a recipe ebook and I try to make it easy and tasty as possible. And I eat them every single day. Like all the stuff that I learned is out of that recipe ebook. And the reason I know anything about food is because I wrote that ebook. So I hope you guys enjoy it and use it and it works for you as much as it works for, for me. Also, I just like to let you guys know that this podcast is sponsored by Eternum Labs, which is obviously one of the best supplement brands that you can see anywhere. We have a whole bunch of different range in terms of anti-aging. We've got sleep and high performance. We have vitamins and, and mushrooms as well. But just a little secret, just a little secret, little secret is we have a whole bunch of new stuff coming out, some real researched and some real good products coming out that I'm just super excited to use myself. <laughs> so I hope you guys get extremely excited for those as well. And if you go to eternumlabs.com.au or you can follow Eternum Labs on the Eternum Labs AU Instagram, you'll be able to find out all the new stuff on there, which obviously is going to be best for you. So you don't miss out on anything and you can get all the real good deals um, with those, which would just be absolutely fantastic because I can't wait either. So without any further ado, guys, I am just so excited to share with you this podcast. Today we have on the show, Taylor Clark Johnson, and he is a beast. He is a sex coach and he has been doing it for, I don't even know how many years, but this podcast, we get into some awesome conversation, everything sex in terms of like physical sex, what, how to do, why to do sex, what's the spiritual side of things, what's the masculine side of things, what's the feminine side of things. We dive deep into this podcast and it is Just so fantastic to share a space with someone who has done so much self-work and has so much knowledge and focus and presence. Like this conversation was one of the best conversations that I've had by far. And we're definitely going to do a round two because it was just great. There's so much to get into. There's so much to talk about when it comes to sex because we're never talking about it enough. So I hope you guys like this podcast. I hope you listen to this the whole way through. Like, please listen to it the whole way through. And if you like anything and you got anything out of this podcast, obviously like and share, pretty please. And... Yeah, that would just make 
make the absolute world. But yeah, this is a topic that's not talked about enough. We get into some absolute secret sauce here. So stay tuned, put your thinking caps on, and I hope you guys learned as much as what I did in this podcast, because seriously, it just blew my brain the whole time. So thank you so much, guys, for listening. Thank you for tuning in, and thank you for choosing to be being the best you. Hope you enjoy this podcast as much as I did, and we'll see you in the next one. Taylor, thank you so much for coming onto the show, man. Yeah, man, happy to be here with you. Yeah, Thanks good. for having me on. Yeah, man. Thank you so much. So just a quick question. What have you recently, or like what's some of the biggest lessons that you have learned um, recently that you think would be really good to share? (laughs) Oh, okay. Starting off with a bang. What are some of the biggest lessons I've learned recently? Recently, yeah. Recently. Honestly, man, the biggest thing for me recently is diving more deeply into breath work. Like breath work is blowing my mind. You know, it's really blowing my mind, but not just my mind, my whole body and my heart and my like awareness and my consciousness and like everything around it, you know, just like realizing just how powerful the breath is and how readily accessible it is at any given moment. Like, boom, right now we could do a minute of a breathing exercise and be in a completely different place, you know, mentally. And it's, yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. So what, what kind of, what kind of breath works? What, what ones are you experimenting with? All kinds. I mean, so there's the one that most people know of now is like the Wim Hof breathwork, yeah. right? Like he popularized a certain kind of breathing technique, but there's all different kinds of breathing patterns that you can do that all fall under this paradigm of breathwork, right? Yeah. And like there's a, there's a breathing pattern you can do to help yourself relax before you go to sleep. A certain like numerical pattern of seconds of breathing in and holding the breath and then a certain amount for breathing out. There's some you can do to amp yourself up, some you can do to bring yourself down. And I've, I've really like, so personally, I've started each day now when I wake up, I immediately start doing some activating breath work, like similar to the Wim Hof style, like a little bit different, but I do it first thing when I wake up and I find that it's just like, bam, it gets my day started with such uh, just fire and, and, but like a balanced grounded fire, you know? What What's the yeah. exercise? Would you mind sharing? Um, okay. Yeah. I mean, so if you're familiar with the Wim Hof breath, it's going to sound pretty similar, but I'll do somewhere yeah. around like 24 to 40 breaths and then a breath retention hold. And then I'll do that again. And then I'll do that again. And then maybe a fourth time, you know, and in there, I might be doing like different body positions, like bringing in a little bit of embodiment to the exercise, but I'm doing it seated, you know, seated on the ground. And it's an activating style breath, like, <sighs> like that. And I'm actually pushing out the air on my exhales. So it's, you know, drawing from a couple other breathwork style traditions, but I find that it really just like, bam, you know, like gets things going. And if I ever feel like I'm energetically crashing throughout the day or having a low point, I'll do a little breath work and some push ups, And, uh, it just like gets me back. I actually spent six hours earlier today in the recording studio, recording a breathwork journey. Cause I'm, I'm so stoked about it. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, God, I love that so much. I noticed yeah. you're also doing like that through your nose as well. Cause usually when I do the Wim Hof stuff, I usually do it like through the mouth. So mm-hmm. that was pretty cool. Yeah. And there's so many different schools of breath work out there. Like Wim Hof is the one that's definitely become popularized, especially in this. It's really popular among guys and especially guys who are wanting to like master life. You could say, <laughs> cause he's all, he's got all this body optimization stuff and there's like 50 other breathwork schools out there. And a lot of them have really great value to offer too. Yeah. Which is sick. Which one do you mind sharing? Cause you mentioned you did want to like calm down and sleep. What's, what do you like to do for that? Uh, there's a, um, uh, what is the pattern? Let's see if I can remember offhand. I don't remember exactly what it is, but I liked it so much that I actually created a little 15 minute breathwork track for myself, like modeled after it. And I think it's like a four, four second inhale, seven second hold, then eight second exhale, followed by again, a four second inhale immediately after. And it's done in a relaxed way. You know, it's not done in like, oh, I have to achieve this breathwork thing. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But it's done in a relaxed way. And, and to tie this into sex, which is my, my main jam, or at least my main area of interest professionally and, and really personally, like breath work in the context of sex is incredible too. And that doesn't mean you have to be there with your partner, like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like from the beginning, <laughs> but like incorporating active intentional breathing in the sexual context, it really takes things to the next level, you know? And a lot of guys go through my courses or work with me to try to achieve these non-ejaculatory orgasmic states. And like ground one of that is like, okay, let's talk about your breathing. 
you know, before we do anything else, like before we talk about the microcosmic orbit or even sexual energy or anything like that, it's like, how are you breathing? Let's work on this a little bit, you know, go back to the fundamentals. Sick. I absolutely love that. And I'd love for you to like dive into that a little bit further, obviously, yeah. if like, cause you just started like oh, at the start when we're working with someone with sex, um, we're going to start at the breathing. What sort mm. of the like generalized, cause obviously I know it's going to be different for like different people that you're working with, but what's like the yeah. sort of general process, um, to go through? Yeah. Well, that's an awesome question. So, I mean, you like think about your general process, how you started off uh, masturbating or having sex in your life. And yep. for everybody, everybody listening, like think about this, like when you started masturbating and probably how you've been masturbating or having sex your whole life, like if you pay attention to what happens when you get more aroused and more aroused and closer to ejaculatory orgasm, your breath actually becomes more shallow. It's almost involuntary, but it's kind of a byproduct of the arousal experience. And usually most people start to breathe more shallowly when they're having sex in general. And so like this is step one, just to become aware of what actually happens with your breath. And then I have guys go through a process of practicing breathing more deeply while they masturbate. And I like to call that self-pleasuring. Um, but like pr actually practice, you know, imprint the brain and the body with the belief and the understanding that breathing deeply throughout sexual stimulation and arousal is good. And then you start to like realize, oh shit, this actually makes pleasure way better. <laughs> it helps me like not ejaculate before I want to. And it makes me feel orgasmic all over, you know, um, that's, the, that's like a very abbreviated version yeah. of this, you know? Yeah. And, and before we dive into that, because I got so many questions to just rise up like, oh, where do I go? Where do I go? Just yeah, yeah, ask, yeah, totally, like, totally. Just, just like before we get into it. So the thing is, why do people in general want to focus on sex? Like why, like I'm, I'm, I'm assuming like a lot of people would probably, yeah. Because some people may have like really good sex life. They may have average. If they're with a partner for a long time, I'd be like, eh, it's pretty good. Some people might be like, it's trash. Other people would be like, it's not too bad. But in terms of like, I think like talking about optimizing sex like yeah just in my personal circles i don't know if it's an australia thing mm -hmm. um but when you get to a certain age we've been in a long-term relationship it's not like we get into the nitty-gritty and talk about exactly what we're doing how we're doing things we're just like ah, it was good did this i'm sick whatever um it's very like that so why do you think people should focus on sex Yeah, that's a really good question. We kind of hit the ground running there with some few, some other topics, but yeah, let's let's really ground in with this one because this you know with this one we can go deep. Um, why focus on sex? Well, I'm not this sort of like sex evangelist that says like you need to focus on sex if you're totally satisfied. Like if you're completely satisfied with your sex life and your life in general, then like keep doing the things you're doing. That's awesome, you know. And if there are areas of your life that you feel like could improve sex is a major component of life that most people don't talk about in this realm of like, of improving your life, you know? And it's ironic because like sex is at, at the very core of what and who we are as, as animals, as creatures on this planet, you know, we have reproductive organs, our entire system, you know, revolves, you could make the argument that our entire system revolves around sexual attraction and this biological imperative or drive to procreate. Now, whether you're attracted to men or women, you still have this drive to ejaculate, this drive for the sexual experience. And it's um, like how we respond to that actually has a big impact on our entire life. You know, and this is why Napoleon Hill in his book, Think and Grow Rich, he devoted an entire chapter to the mystery of sex transmutation he because did. he said, oh, yeah, here's this huge group of really successful men who have figured out that this is actually a really powerful thing to work with. And and they have worked with it. And as a result, like they're able to accomplish all of this stuff, you know, and in some of the older esoteric traditions that I've personally studied like Taoist sexuality, yogic sexuality, what, what people modernly call Tantra, uh, these perspectives of, you know, how you, the way you approach your sex life has a huge impact on the rest of your life. Like that's understood in those traditions, you know, but it's not that way in most of Western culture. We have this, I like to say, we have this illusion that our sex lives in a little box down in our genitals and it doesn't affect everything else. But it, <laughs> it absolutely does affect the rest of our life. Like yeah. 
you know, if you spent the past seven days in your room masturbating, watching porn, then on the eighth day, you go into a really important business meeting. Of course, man, you better believe that's going to impact your mind and your consciousness and your ability to deliver messages or your ability to get, you know, to give a pitch in a good way. Like it has an impact. Yeah. As, as it does like crazy. And as well, if, if someone even just wanted to, I think, personally just learn a lot about themselves i think that could be like in a really a really important thing as well because i think it's some sometimes in the terms if you just have the goal of optimizing your life and making everything better sometimes it could be a little bit overlooked yeah yeah, yeah. and it's kind of ironic also to think about like optimizing sex <laughs> for, yeah, no. for the sake for the sake of having a better life because i mean in my experience like the best sexual experiences come from when I'm fully surrendered and present in the moment and not trying to do a specific thing, but I'm just existing in the pleasure and breathing with the pleasure. And as a byproduct of being in that flow state in the sexual experience, my life improves. Now I will say there's a whole other element here that we haven't talked about yet, but uh, that's, that's a big uh, important piece of this. And it comes like, You've probably heard of it in the nofap world or the semen retention world and this is like how often do you ejaculate and there are not there's really not that great of uh, resources out there in terms of research on this topic but you'll find a lot of personal anecdotes and stories and and even traditions that say like the frequent the frequency at which you ejaculate has an impact on your life too and it's probable that if you're a modern guy masturbating, having sex, probably you're ejaculating more than is optimal for your life. Generally speaking, very, very, very generally speaking. Which is, which is insane. That's sort of, it sort of led me down. I listened to a couple of Ben Greenfield podcasts. Mm. I listened to a couple of John Gray podcasts. I researched mm. a little bit on um, Muntak Chia stuff. And I also mm. looked into or someone else it might have been David Dieter or someone else. Mm. And I was, I was re, re, reading their stuff. And through this time when I was researching all of this, I was going, I was at the end of like a breakup. Mm. And this was last last year. And in, was it, it, was, it was September, August or September, just August last year, I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to like quit masturbating in general. If John Gray mm. can go like nine years as a monk <laughs> with, without ejaculating, I'm sure um, that I can just quit masturbating and just stick to sex only. And, mm. oh man, it's been like one of the best changes I've ever had, like ever. Mm. Like just as like a personal story, as like a little personal anecdote, like mm -hmm. my energy is through the roof. My creation ability is just absolutely nuts. My focus is out of control and I'm mm -hmm. less focused on sort of the materialistic things as in, as in being like, oh, go get a girl. Oh, go do this. I feel like mm. first I'm like, well, the next girl I want to get with is sort of once I wanted to be like my life partner. So mm. I need to feel responsible enough within myself by and validate myself by creating a business and using the sex energy so that I feel worthy enough to get a partner, um, which is just like blow my mind. And so just like to what you were saying, I was just like, I'm, I'm a testimonial there. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Wait, so just to clarify right now, are you still in this window of no masturbation? Yeah, I just quit it. I was just like, I'm probably just going to quit and just stick to sex only at the moment um, and, mm. and see how that goes. <laughs> I have no, like, I have like no end date, but it's been, mm. yeah, it has been interesting and it's, um, it's been really motivating. And, but like for myself, I had to just say, I, I have to quit it. Cause if I'm like, oh yeah, I'll do it once a week, once a fortnight or something like that. And I just go back into old patterns. And I've mm. been addicted to porn and masturbating beforehand and it's, and it's it significantly drowned my am energy and it's been very comforting, like eating a cake, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah, totally. eating a cake's comforting. So I'm like, yeah, nah, done. I'm, I'm done with that for a mm. while. So, which is hence why I led right. me um, to your stuff and I was like looking into your stuff and I was like, bah, whoa, what do you do here? Because without it, um, I also think about sex all the time. Like my brain's mm. just like, Man, when it's not focused on something or I take a second to relax, mm -hmm. boom, it just like floods my brain and it's quite overwhelming, especially at yeah. the start. So yeah, that's like why well, I wanted to have one of these conversations with you is, is, is get into this to figure out how I can do things because as one of those problems, it's like, well, <laughs> I'm going to ejaculate really quickly 
how do I solve that? How do I learn sex again? How do I learn how to, because I don't want to be ejaculating as frequently either. I don't want to be having sex and having to ejaculate every time because this energy is like fantastic. And it's mm. like, well, how do I have the body orgasms? And, and like, where do I go? What do I learn? So, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Man, so man, there's like 25 different there's, directions yeah, we could go from what you just said. <laughs> so, all right, so let's figure out the direction that we want to go. Um, yeah. We could go in the direction of like self growth when it comes to self pleasure. We could go in the direction of of how to keep these practices alive in a romantic relationship and a sexual relationship. Um, what feels most exciting, alive, interesting for you? Let's go just down the room quickly for a while of like practical tools. Mm -hmm. to get better at sex. <laughs> all right. So, yeah. All right. So the first thing that comes to mind, it's, um, I hear that it has been very valuable for you to cut out masturbation for a while, which is, which is great. I'm really happy to hear that that has been helpful for you. And it can also be really helpful to develop a new relationship with masturbation, a new relationship with self-pleasure where you can start to experiment with different practices and, and embodied uh, feelings and sensations and pieces of awareness that will help, you know, help you help you in the sexual experience. Like what you do in your self-pleasure sessions translates to the sexual experience with another person. So you're right. Like if you're constantly masturbating for less than five minutes at a time and you just masturbate to get off and you don't really move your body and your hand just goes up and down like a jackhammer for a little bit and then you ejaculate, like <laughs> that is absolutely going to negatively impact your sexual experiences if you're doing this out of habit, right? A very concrete way to shift this and to improve your sex life is to set a boundary for yourself and say, hey, if I am going to self pleasure, if I'm going to masturbate, then I'm only going to do it for at least 20 minutes at a time. And I'm going to incorporate all kinds of other stuff into the session. So not just moving my hand like a jackhammer, but also like touching my chest and massaging my shoulders and breathing deeply and making sound and getting into my full body as a lover, you know, just by myself, like getting into my full animalistic sexual side by myself. And through doing that, I start to normalize that within myself. And I start to tell my sexual response system and my brain that sexual intimacy should last at least 20 minutes because this is the norm that I'm programming into myself. So I'm a big believer in the power of intentionally uh, directed self-pleasure sessions and the value that that can add to the sexual experience. You know, and it's interesting, like if you look at a lot of guys who do NoFap, like they have all these great results and their life changes and they have all this clarity and confidence and they're able to accomplish all these different tasks. But then what happens when they actually want to start having sex again or a relationship again, or, you know, start going into sexuality again, a lot of problems usually come back up because nobody has ever taken the time to develop healthy habits or healthy ways of approaching this stuff. So you know, true. I think, yeah. Yeah, so true, and I absolutely love that. So, what would be like the next steps if you uh, if you did that and you started to to get connected with yourself and you're like you you had a mm -hmm. partner and you wanted to really optimize or essentially like the, the intimacy within you and your relationship? Yeah. What what would you encourage? Well, I'll start with just like a personal story because I know that everybody loves those and it's easier you know to relate to than oh you should do this thing. Right? <laughs> so. My personal experience is I prefer to ejaculate once every like 12 to 14 days. And within that, I like to have sex as much as I want, you know, or as little as I want, depending on the life context and all this stuff. Um, but I find that this helps me. So I'm in a long-term relationship that's mostly monogamous right now. Um, but I find that ejaculating at that frequency helps us maintain a certain level of polarity and a certain level of charge between us. And polarity is another word that some people use for attraction. You know, that zest you feel when you look at your partner or don't, <laughs> depending on the context of your relationship at any given moment, you know, like the frequency, if you're ejaculating frequently, it's more likely that you're going to go through periods of not being as attracted to your partner. So for me personally, I find that ejaculating once every 12 to 14 days keeps my attraction to her high and it keeps my uh, mind from wandering as much to, to other women or other places. And I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing, but I'm intentionally choosing a monogamous relationship right now after years of polyamory and all sorts of other exploration, because I want to, you know, give energy to my business and my creative projects 
And I find that like being intentional this way helps me not just in my sexual relationship, but also in my entire life. You know, and if I think back to when I was younger, uh, when I was ejaculating regularly, like multiple times a week, sometimes daily, there was this, um, this zest or this fire that I didn't have as much of. And I couldn't quite put my finger on it. Why I was not feeling like, ah, you know, life. Um, <laughs> That's and, a great way to put it. Yeah. And it's like, it's interesting because if you're ejaculating regularly, like every day, there's certain things you still can do. So you're quote unquote functional, right? It's very easy to do manual labor, uh, to do tasks that involve your hands and building things. Uh, but when it comes to actually like what I'd say, like high demand, cognitive, uh, creative type pursuits or things that involve like a really high level of critical thinking or discourse or verbal communication or something like that. There's a zest or there's an edge that not ejaculating all the time will give you, you know, and you'll, you'll, you'll see this in, in all kinds of books. Like David data talks about this a lot. Like if you want to develop an edge, like stop ejaculating all the time. And I mean, this sounds like you've experienced this too. Yeah, man, crazy. I had a short-term relationship at the start of this year and obviously with quitting masturbating, I was like, okay, this energy is like great and yeah. I want to be having sex as much as possible, but I don't want to be ejaculating because this is so fantastic. And as soon as I like put the uh, restraint on myself to be like, all right, let's try weekly. Let's just do once a week throughout yeah. that whole week. Like it was a struggle not to ejaculate because it was so much fun. Mm. <laughs> like mm -hmm. it was so much fun. And I had that like that, uh, that, oof, that fire that you said that, um, th that edge of just like energy. And it was just mm -hmm. like, it was overwhelming and it was, it was so much more fun <laughs> to be honest. And it was like, <laughs> were challenging. I found like, it was sort of like a game. Like you'd be like, yes, I, I was having sex a lot more frequently. And, mm -hmm. um, it was a lot more spontaneous, mm. but <laughs> At, at, at the same time, it was like really difficult not to ejaculate. <laughs> it was like, yeah. man, I'm going to keep failing. I'm, I'm trying to stick to a week, but God damn, I'm failing quite regularly. Um, but getting better <laughs> at it, getting better at it. So, yeah. 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 So, I mean, that's when like experimentation could come into play, you know, yeah. like, are you, are you fully satisfied with your sex life? You know, maybe, maybe not. And it's interesting, like a lot of guys and myself included when I was younger, like, the very concept of ejaculation is, is just like intricately tied with sex. You know, like I remember being in sexual scenarios when I was younger and I didn't ejaculate or in my mind, like the woman didn't bring me to ejaculatory orgasm. And I remember even saying to somebody like, oh, what's the point if I'm not going to come, you know, <laughs> which was a totally asshole move uh, to do on my part. But I mean, what, that's where I was at the time, you know, and, and I've since, learned like from embodied learning not just intellectually but i've felt that like life is actually better for me i'm able to make more money i'm able to have better friendships i'm able you know more able to show up well in the world if i can have sex and not ejaculate but instead integrate that energy you could call it energy or arousal or stimulation whatever you want to call it into my body in some way to where it persists in my body instead of leaving my body through an ejaculation it actually comes up and integrates into my whole system and then with that extra charge i could go to the gym or i could go you know to my work or i could do whatever uh, but but i'm using it instead as action in the world and this is like this is exactly what sexual energy transmutation is that napoleon hill was talking about it's basically like choosing to not ejaculate but instead taking that arousal, integrating it into your body, and then using that energy to go out into the world and do something productive with. Crazy. How do you do it? <laughs> well, simple. Simple. You just don't ejaculate. Yeah. <laughs> um, baby steps. Baby yeah. steps. You know, because there's this thing called blue balls, which is real, which hurts. <laughs> And nobody wants that. The scientific name for that is epididymal hypertension. It's a recognized thing that actually exists. And like, interesting side note, I made a post on Instagram a year and a half or two ago asking like, are there any women out there in the world who have ever experienced something like what guys talk about as being blue balls? And I was just like, just like loaded with responses and comments from all these women saying, yeah, I've actually felt the same thing, like stagnation, physical pain, all this stuff. So that's really interesting to me. Uh, but I, I just wanted to like put that in there. 
Yeah. Yes, blue balls is real. And yes, the phenomenon that we call blue balls can exist for anybody in any any kind of body. Blue gonads. <laughs> yeah. Blue blue something. Like yeah. and and in the Taoist sexuality and the and the yogic sexual systems, they would see this as energetic stagnation. And so basically it's a buildup of energy that just doesn't get integrated into the rest of your system. It just it stagnates and then causes pain and and all this stuff. And so like, okay, so then what, how do you move this energy, right? Or how do you move this buildup within your system? And there's, there's a number of different ways you can do it. Breathing is one of them, like actively breathing. And sometimes in sex, I actually do treat my breath as a practice, you know, and I have to intentionally do 10 or 20 like Wim Hof ish style breaths, you know, in sex. And I find that it actually, when I do that, my whole system gets stimulated more, not necessarily in terms of sexual pleasure, but in terms of aliveness and awareness. And it allows the sexual pleasure to spread out more in my body and not just stay located in my genitals. And there's all kinds of other stuff you can do in the sexual experience, like focusing on physical sensations in the rest of your body or in your partner, instead of just hyper-focusing on the tip of your penis. Um, but breath is a big one. And then like, if you have sex or you're sexual or you masturbate and you plan on not ejaculating, then immediately afterwards, like don't waste any time, immediately start to squeeze your testicles and massage them a little bit, massage your perineum, which is the area in between your testicles and your anus, like push up there with two of your fingers and massage around a little bit, and then do some leg stretches, some stretches to get into your groin. And then I like to do some actual intensive physical exercise too, bam, immediately after like 50 push-ups or some jumping jacks or you know, shaking my body some way to actually do physical, like something physically strenuous, because then I find that that helps to dissipate the charge and integrate it into the rest of my system also, you know, but, but prior, prior to all that stuff is, <laughs> yeah, prior to all that stuff is just, is coming in with the intention and the understanding that doing such a thing is A, what you want, and B, can actually be good for you and valuable, and C, can actually lead to more pleasure overall. You yeah. Know? Like, like doing this is not saying no to pleasure. It's not like we're saying no to orgasm. We're just saying no to habitual mindless ejaculation, you know, Def like saying yes to pleasure, yes to orgasm, yes to all this stuff, just no to the programming that we've been given by porn and society and movies and TV shows and articles and all this stuff. And Yeah. Yeah. I'll pause there. <laughs> Dude, I think it's just one thing as well for for people to be comfortable enough to get vulnerable with some of these things because it mm. because sex is sort of in that position where there's a fear of judgment. Yeah. <laughs> Depending on totally. what you're doing. Like you don't want to come in as a guy like into your partner and just be like, oh, I'm just I'm just gonna hopefully she doesn't notice that I'm doing this breath or doing this like or anything what it is and you like kinda of hope but it's actual, you know, having that vulnerability. <laughs> and trust, I think, with your partner is, is one thing as well. And to know that it's yeah. going to pay off in leaps and bounds. Yeah, for sure. Well, and this gets into the other really interesting area of what I guess we're calling sex optimization for the sake of this conversation is, yes, there are all these practices you can do uh, internally and for yourself. And sex with another person involves another person. <laughs> who has their own sets of needs and desires and feelings and fears and boundaries and all this stuff. And so how you navigate this with them is part of this practice. Also, it's part of the practice of sexual yoga, if you want to call it that, you know, and so having that conversation up front is incredibly important. You know, when I first started seeing the woman who's now my partner, we had these conversations and I said, Hey, just so you know, like, these are my preferences. When I get into the sexual experience, I don't always like to ejaculate. And sometimes I might want to pause and take some breaths or do this thing. And here's why I want to do it. And then expressing that it's not just because I want to make more money and be more successful and live an optimized life. No, it's because I actually want more connection with you. Like I want more connection with you. I want more charge in our relationship. I want more sex. I want more pleasure for you and for myself. And if you are a heterosexual man, and if you are in a relationship with a woman, like <laughs> Some women will say that they really want the guy to come every time, but I guarantee you like 99% of the women that are out there have like memories at, at best, like memories of being incredibly dissatisfied by what happens after the guy has an ejaculatory orgasm, <laughs> yeah. you know, sometimes even traumatic experiences for sure. 
you know, but like, so then to tell them, Hey, actually there's this other realm that's possible. If I choose not to ejaculate, it means we can both experience more pleasure together. It's like, it might be hard for people to understand at first, but once they experience it, they're like, Oh, okay. Sold. <laughs> Sold. Yes. Dude, that's so true. I've had like some of my coaching clients I've like shared like my story with and just be like, look, I just try to stick to from what I've researched is like one ejaculation a week for the moment. That's what I'm doing. And I'm like, and I'm thinking that maybe once a fortnight, it's actually going to be better for me to be honest. But through talking through like through it with them, a lot of the time their partners were like, mm, 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 hell no, like not going to happen. And then they ended mm. up talking, going through and trying. And then like, I think there's two or three people that have got back to me and their partners, the ones that I've encouraged, two or three people, their partners have come back to me and they've been like, thank you. Sex is so much better now. (laughs) And I'm like, what? This works. Correct. Yeah, totally. It's mind blowing. I've gotten a bunch of those emails too, actually, from from partners of the guys who've taken my courses or worked with me. They're like, hey, Taylor, I just want to say... Thanks. We never met or talked before, but I was really skeptical at first, but now, holy shit, it's just like, thank you because our relationship is better, yada, 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 et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. It's, uh, it's pretty remarkable. Yeah. And like, I think there's obviously that, just the dynamic of the, like the sex, the sex experience in a partnership as well, in, in an intimate partnership is like so ridiculously important because it's one of those like, uh, specific positions where you can be in where like all frustrations can go and all love can be shown as well and it can all be done for that experience which I think is great yeah there's two other things I'd love to um, like get into before we get into some other stuff and that is I'd love to talk about <laughs> how to actually internalize um, an orgasm oh, we'll start there first mm. how, to, how do you actually internalize an orgasm so when you say that are you are you basically speaking how do you have an orgasm without ejaculating yeah <laughs> yeah so this is the million dollar question right yeah uh million dollar question and i like to provide some context up front like i could tell you about 20 different things right now to do and it's like it's not going to happen because like this sort of thing takes practice you know yep. practice over time like consistent dedicated practice to overcome the urge to ejaculate when you watch porn or when you have sex, that urge is profoundly strong. So strong. It takes a serious amount of commitment and, and uh, uh, what is it? Free will, motivation, will, willpower, Willpower, you know? So I just want to say that. So much willpower, man. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So like first step in this is overcoming the habitual urge to ejaculate in sex and learning to experience sex without ejaculating and being okay. And, and not just being okay, but actually enjoying this. Like that's step number one. Like you can't, you can't jump to being able to have non-ejaculatory orgasms without first letting go of ejaculation as this sort of like goal and pinnacle of the sexual experience. And that takes a lot of fucking work, man. It takes a lot of reprogramming to get there. Um, but I just, I like to frame things by saying that up front, you know. It's the black and, belt jujitsu. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, which I have not done the work to get to a black belt in jujitsu, but I have heard that it's massive. Yeah, it's massive, awesome. It's really and it's so, it's, well, it brings up a really interesting analogy and a good point. It's like for people who are really going to go to that level and get a black belt in jujitsu or really master any craft, like they put in a serious amount of effort over time. But for some reason, when people think about sex, they never think that, oh, I need to put in like a year's worth of effort to this you know, or six months, they're like, oh, I should be able to figure this out in a couple of weeks or a month. And if they don't, then they get bored with it or they don't think they're having any results. And I'm like, dude, everything else in life, you have to put in a serious amount of effort over time to achieve this sort of thing. You know, like you can't just think, bam, it's going to immediately happen, but it is possible. And, and I'm here to say that from personal experience and helping other guys get there. And I do also want to say that when I talk about having an orgasm without ejaculation, I'm not talking about having the same kind of genitally focused, like involuntarily contractile orgasm where your penis and your PC muscles squeeze and you have this big explosion and then a crash afterwards with a refractory period. I'm talking about a different kind of orgasm that doesn't build up and crash, but that can build and build and build sort of like ocean waves that you ride over time. And then the sexual pleasure that you usually would experience just in your penis and genitals actually spreads throughout your whole body. And all of a sudden you feel like you're in an orgasm for an extended period of time 
versus having this easily identifiable point on a graph where you can be like, oh, that was orgasm and then it was done. You know, it's like it's getting into the state of orgasm versus having this this small orgasm. And right, and so within with sorry, go ahead. So just say it was most, like way more in your body so you can feel the sensation sort of Yeah. 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 And like I've had experiences where it seems like my whole body is ejaculating for a long period of time, you know. And I, I also want to be clear, like I don't have that every time I have sex. <laughs> yeah. But and when I can have sex with my partner and uh, I feel very emotionally open, energetically open and physically present and physically open without rushing, but really being able to dive into and relax into the sexual experience, that's when this kind of thing can happen. Wouldn't it be yeah. nice if you could have to have that every day, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. <laughs> it's pretty... Was, like, to, too much, or too overwhelming. Like, oh, every day I'm drained now. <laughs> <laughs> I think there was an old Saturday Night Live skit some point about this guy who was just constantly orgasming and it seemed fun at first, but then it just like totally fucked over his life because <laughs> you can't do anything else. Yeah. I mean, yeah. So like I, I you can have little micro non ejaculatory orgasms or, or semi, you know, whenever you have sex, but like having this big sort of extended, like what I was just talking about there is what people call like the spiritual orgasm or the sort of tantric orgasm or this like kind of the holy grail that some people call it of the sexual experience. And, and like the irony of this is you can't really force it. It's something that has to happen when you by yourself or you with another person are so immersed into the moment and so open that the pleasure just unfolds within you, between you. And it just like, boom, this massive, just opening and it's beautiful. And it's, it's not just sexually pleasurable, but it's yeah. heart, heart pleasurable. And yeah, the whole, so beyond just sex. Yeah. So beyond just sex. Yeah. And so it, it would be a neat trick to be able to figure out how to have the short, like seven second contractile orgasm without ejaculating and to do that constantly. That's not what I'm talking about. <laughs> and I don't like that. I don't know how to do that. And I haven't met anybody who can do that. I've met guys who say that they can do that. But then when I dig a little deeper, I find out that they're actually having what's called a retrograde ejaculation and they still go through a refractory period afterwards and they still kind of lose their erection and they still kind of lose interest in sex for a little bit. And what happens there is usually they're using the technique called the million dollar point or squeezing their pelvic floor really hard. And it's actually diverting the flow of semen and ejaculate up into the bladder instead of out through the penis. And that's, that's, that's different. Uh, that's different. And just for the sake of conversation, I do also want to say that there are some men, a very small percentage of men out there, but a small percentage of men who can have multiple ejaculatory orgasms over and over and over again, but they're very much on the outlier in the grand scheme of things. And there's been some, I think a brief look into research with some of these guys. And I think there's research showing that like and I could be wrong about this. And if I'm wrong, somebody listening, totally send me an email and call me out on this, but that they're, that these guys, their brains don't actually release as much prolactin when they have an ejaculatory orgasm. And prolactin is the neurotransmitter that, that causes things to sort of slow down and go into the refractory period. Yeah. Crazy mind just. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's so, so much there to digest. Um, yeah. I just said a lot. <laughs> yeah, I was I was thinking of something. There was something really good that I was thinking of, and now I just can't remember it. Hopefully, it'll come back to me later. Well, we were talking about sex. <laughs> <laughs> Holy! <laughs> no way! Oh, yeah, right. So, well, one of the things that also one of the other questions that I did want to ask you was mm -hmm. just to get an idea of sort of the advanced level for people listening mm -hmm. in terms of like you know what's the goal? What do I want to reach for? over a certain period of time. What are mm. some of the intimacy practices that you and your partner go through? And obviously mm. that I know I said the word intimacy because you're obviously right. gonna have some things that you do whilst you're having sex, but there's mm. gonna be, a, I'm, I'm guessing a whole bunch of other stuff that you do that's not in the bedroom. Cause I've just always had a thought in terms of, I had like a psychedelic experience and I was like, oh, this plays very well into sex. And I'm like, so mm -hmm. the, the ceremony of sex 
never begins in the bedroom. It doesn't even begin Correct. when you're kissing or you're in foreplay. It doesn't even do that. It starts with like some bodily gestures and some eye, eye stuff and some conversation. And then it's like, oh, now we're here. We're having sex. Like, so the whole <laughs> ceremony of sex starts like way beforehand. So I just like to know like, yeah. yeah, what are some of the intimacy experiences and stuff that you, you and your partner do so people can get an idea of like, oh, that's something to try to work towards. Yeah, for sure. And I want to take it even a step further back because if, you know, there's different phases to relationship and there's different aspects to intimacy also. And it, when you're in the first beginning phases of a relationship, you know, you could say up to the first year or something, it's pretty easy. Like, bam, bam, <laughs> sex, bam. Oh, sex again. Boom. Sex five times in a row, you know, and then sex the next day. And then, it's, you know, eventually the new relationship energy or honeymoon period or whatever you want to call it, like fades away. And then you realize you're both actually normal humans with your own shit and your own patterns and all this stuff too. And so, yes, there are things you can do to like send sexy texts and et cetera, et cetera. But even taking a step back from that, like one of the things we both do just for our own sanity and our own like health and happiness is we each see our own individual therapists just because like, living in the world. Like we live in my opinion, in a fucked up world with a lot of like really unhealthy contexts around a lot of stuff. And it's really helpful to have somebody who will just like listen to you, you know, and provide reflection who's totally dedicated to your success. And for some people that's a coach, uh, but for some people it's a therapist and some people have a therapist and a coach and they can be, you know, fundamentally different, but I think that's a really powerful way to like exist in a place of personal sovereignty where I'm not putting any of my shit on my partner, but I'm working through my own processes and owning my shit so I can show up in a healthy way in this relationship. So we can both show up as individuals. And that's a huge component to intimacy, you know? And yeah, I remember just as a quote, um, Will Smith said, and it was something along the lines of, I hope I don't butcher it, but he was like me and, um, my wife are on, like com like completely different paths in terms of what we're doing we're just mm. deciding to walk next to each other as mm. we as we go along with it something like that and that sort of stuck with me for a while and i was like oh that makes so much sense because like just growing up in the whole being a guy and maturing man i stuffed up so many times i made like girl way too much the purpose and i was like doing everything for her and yes. and she was like ah oh, yuck and then I've done the opposite <laughs> where I've, um, where I've just been like too withdrawn and like, I'm like Oh God damn. So I was like, yeah, just really just focus on being the best, the best version of yourself or the best you and keep yourself like really solid and have a strong foundation. And obviously totally. that's going to work better. So thanks for saying that, man. That was just like little things just went ding, ding, ding. So yeah, for sure. And, and like this whole idea of like you complete me or I need somebody to complete me is a fucked up like byproduct of Disney and all these other romanticized stories that society gives us. And I think if anybody's thinking in terms of that framework, you better like back up and reevaluate and like you complete yourself, you know, and then from that point, like you can have a healthy relationship with another complete person and that's a whole, we could do another whole podcast on that, but I want to just like say that piece and dive back to an intimacy practice. Uh, another thing we do is every new moon. So we, we, we're both like really earthy people. You could say we're both spiritual people, whatever, like follow the cycles of the seasons and the moon and all this stuff. And um, every new moon we get together and we have a little a, a session, you could call it a ceremony or whatever, where we sit together and we talk about our relationship and we kind of reflect on the past month and what went really well and what was challenging and you know how can we show up better to support each other in relationship and what are some fun things that we want to do over the next moon cycle you know maybe that's a trip to the beach maybe that's uh i don't know going out to eat a really fancy thing maybe that's going camping maybe that's a threesome maybe like whatever you know but like coming up with some collaborative goals as a couple to to accomplish together as a team a really fun way to build intimacy too you know so you're kind of on the same page and then from there like there's all kinds of other stuff you can do like send the sexy texts and etc 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 you know yeah but there's one other thing that i think is super important to say uh, around this but it looks like you were about had something on the tip of your tongue okay Feels, man. cool so this is another thing that like in my relationship right now both of us are actively working on this this particular thing and it's a doozy man it's a serious one and i've seen it like ruin relationships and ruin polarity and it's this thing where after you've been in relationship for a while 
it's really, really easy to fall into patterns of taking your partner for granted. And I'm not just talking about like, oh yeah, she's here or he's here and I have them, but like specifically how you show up with your partner in the like everyday moments of life. Like, do you start like just saying stupid shit around each other? Like, do you start like farting around each other? Like not that farting is bad, but like, what are the things that you do that maybe on a subtle level might actually be killing your attraction? And you're doing those things out of perceived comfort in the moment, like perceived comfort and intimacy and closeness, but that's actually killing sexual charge. You know, and this is like a huge thing that I want to like tease apart a little bit more. I don't know if it's Brene Brown or somebody, um, Maybe, maybe it's not Brene Brown. Somebody who's a famous research speaker person out there said something to the effect of intimacy is the killer of desire. And I think that's like, it's a really interesting one, you know, because obviously in long-term romantic relationship, we do want some level of intimacy, but generally people also want sustained sexual passion and sustained fire. And so it's this balancing act of having intimacy but also not being so quote unquote intimate that we lose the charge and we lose the attraction for each other. And that's a delicate balance, you know? That is. And I can find like, just like speaking of like to myself as a guy, as like, it is super desirable to be, as I was mentioned beforehand, like it's really comfortable to ejaculate like every day. It's very comfortable to eat a cake. It's also very comfortable to be extremely like intimate and super relaxed um yeah with with your partner so that i can definitely see how that comes because if you start doing it then she's not gonna do it and then you're totally. gonna be like well i'm less attracted to you now what yeah yeah and then the question the question becomes like what sort of relationship do you want to create what relationship culture do you want to create how do you want to lead in this scenario you know and i there's an example that i like to give to like drive this home two friends of mine i was on a camping trip with a couple of years ago and both individually beforehand, they were talking, this is a couple, uh, they were both telling me like, God, you know, Taylor, like, I love John, or I just said his name, whatever. John's a, <laughs> John yeah, Doe. I say the other John Doe. I, I, yeah, John Doe. I know a lot of Johns, <laughs> uh, but this one person and his girlfriend, they both came to me separately and they're like, wow, you know, I really love this person but our sex life, it's just not so great. Like we haven't had sex in a while. And I'm like, okay, well, this is, this will be cool to go camping with y'all and a bunch of other people and see like what the deal is. And over the course of this camping trip, a couple of times when I was around them, I was like, good Lord, what's wrong? Like they would say things to each other, like, Hey, those snookums, you going to make me some food, you know, or like, what up little baby, 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 baby. <laughs> like seriously, like all this baby talk stuff. And then I pulled them aside at one point. I was like, enough (laughs) do you think (laughs) that talking to each other this way might have something to do with the reason you haven't had sex in a month (laughs) like i i challenge you to try not speaking like this at all for a month and just see what happens to your relationship don't do anything else just completely remove this element of how you communicate with each other and see what happens and sure enough like sex came back but it's amazing like because for them they both came from this pattern apparently that sort of talk was really comforting to both of them as children you know so in the context of their intimate relationship they just started doing it because it was comfortable and easy and there was this fun element to it but it totally like sabotaged their entire sexual relationship and it's like little pieces like that are super important to be aware of you know oh, imagine what else is there just must be so much that you come across and there was actually a quote today which I, I just want to get up real quickly that I was yeah. reading the Daily Stoic and it was like um, Seneca's quote was leisure without, without study is death, a tomb for the living, living person. And what he means is like, if you are going on holiday and you're going holiday purely to just to relax, that's like mm. death. You should always be learning and always be growing. Essentially saying like, screw comfort, always be like doing something to, to better yourself. And in t- mm. speaking the terms of like relationship and like sex, that is like a, a perfect quote. Just that was like crazy. Mm. Yeah. And discerning between comfort and uh, generative relaxation, I think, because like vacation is important and getting yeah, a massage is. Yeah. is important, you know, yeah. but getting a massage is totally fucking different than sitting on your ass for four hours and watching Netflix while you eat a bag of shit food, you know? It's exactly what he meant. Yeah. Like exactly. So 
Yeah, su- super important. So do, I just love to hear, what are some other su- sort of stories that you've had or success <laughs> stories with people have like, you've been working with guys or anyone else, just, just some ones off the top of your head that you're like, oh, that was massive one where people have just accomplished. Mm, gosh. John Doe. You know, th- this is <laughs> John. Well, I was talking to John the other day. Um, <laughs> it's funny. This is kind of why I want to start my own podcast because I could fill up about five hours worth of stories at least yeah. of all this wild stuff. Um, you know, I'll just put another fun one in there. Like another guy I was talking to in for context in a heterosexual relationship because of what I'm about to talk about. But he found that exploring anal sex with his partner and exploring anal stimulation, specifically him receiving it from his girlfriend really like changed the game for him in terms of sexual intimacy and being able to open himself to his partner. Like beforehand, he had a really hard time being sexually or being emotionally open during sex. And like, it's, it's one thing to be able to have sex for a long period of time and have orgasmic experiences and all this stuff, but it's another thing to really actually make love you know, and to be fully hearted, fully present in the sexual experience from this place of embodiment and love with your partner. Like that's magic, you know, that's absolute magic. And it's different from fucking. And he had a really hard time opening himself uh, before that. And, you know, through a variety of conversations, like we came to this point like, why don't you try letting your partner like penetrate you, you know, anally. And we like, we went through this whole process of normalizing it and talking about why that the butthole is more than just an out hole. It's literally wired for pleasure. You have a prostate, which is like an orgasm amplifier. Like literally it like you stimulate your prostate while you have an ejaculatory orgasm. It's going to be like ejaculation times 10, you know, <laughs> um, God's, God's in your bum hole theory. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. And like him opening, literally opening up in that way it actually just totally transformed the sexual experience between him and his partner. And he was able to, you know, over a period of time, like open his heart more and open himself to making love with his partner. And like a big part of that is like, if you're a guy and if you have a penis and you're usually the person who penetrates your partner, like you have a, like, that's your experience. Right. But being penetrated by somebody else is a completely different experience than penetrating them. And without experiencing it, it's hard to fully understand, but like when somebody's entering your body in a sexual context and you've never had it happen before, I know I'll speak for myself. Like it was kind of terrifying. Yeah. You know? I can imagine I'm just it, like <laughs> visualizing at the moment and I'm just like, nah, I'm not ready yet, but that is crazy. <laughs> like in terms of just like the, the feelings that come up, cause you, you, you have yeah. to be super vulnerable. It's, it's challenging your masculinity. If you're like, you're, you're a dude. Um, totally. so you've got all these things that you have to like overcome in order to do it. I can imagine that once you've sort of overcome that hurdle, it would just be like, yeah, as you said, super opening. Yeah. And like to, to bring it even to the next level, like when it happened to me for the first time, I, my whole body tightened and I got afraid and I even got like a little angry and I was like, what the fuck am I getting angry? Like we're having <laughs> like, it's having a beautiful sexual experience, but it was all this like embodied stuff that was stuck in my body, you know, and just like these primal fears. And it like, when she finally put her finger inside of me, like it hit me like, holy shit. Like this is, yeah, physically it felt nice. Right. But like intellectually in that moment, I, my mind was blown because <laughs> I was like, is this what I've been doing to women my whole life? Like, is this what people, is this what it's like to be penetrated? Like this level of vulnerability, holy shit. It was like a really a humbling and kind of emotional moment for me to realize what I was actually doing to people. And, you know, you talk about sex optimization. Like I think a big part of optimization is actually developing the compassion and understanding for what other people go through that you're with. So you can be more present with them and more loving with them. And like, you know, Never again did I like try to just rush and stick my dick in because I was horny. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it, we laugh about yeah, it now, no, but no, like, yeah, but it's way too delicate. I get it. I'm like, yeah, that just be so so delicate, especially after having such such an experience like that. You'd be like, oh my goodness. Yeah. So that was that was another big one, big story right there. Oh, cool. Have you have you got another one on the top of your head? Just while we're on the mm. topic of stories, I got some more questions, but I was like, that was good. That was really good. <laughs> Uh, let's see. Hit me with a question first. Okay. 
Well, maybe I'll just get into one of the next questions and if another right. story comes up, see how we go. Cool. So a real good question that I'd like to ask you is because there's going to be a lot of people like listening to this and in terms for tips for girls to tell their partner or guys mm. to try, let's just say they've listened to this and they're like, okay, I'm super motivated, but obviously mm. like to, to be better, get better at sex, whatever. And in terms of my mind, because I'm a guy, I've listened to all these things. Yes, I do some personal work. Yeah, I do some other stuff. But guys always need to do things and do stuff. They're like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> right, we're, we're, we're so thingy-brained. Um, we're always just yeah. trying to do things and stuff. So I was like, all right. Tonight, I'm going to have sex with my partner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, what do I actually do that could be a little bit different? In terms of just like actually getting into the sex, like what are some things that I could try that aren't like too far on the edge that sort of let my partner know that I'm keen to take this sort of route? And for girls that are listening, like you could just tell your partner these things, like <laughs> listen in, take some notes, mm -hmm. and see what you think. Yeah, that's an awesome question. Yeah. Thanks for that. So I'd say like as soon as you start having sex with your partner, just like surprise them with the like a quick like finger in the ass immediately <laughs> <laughs> don't do that <laughs> like, uh, don't do that one. <laughs> oh, oh, that one. jesus <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah don't do that. um so one thing that actually is really nice to do to start experimenting with is um and you don't have to be having penetrative sex but it's a cool thing to do like right when you start having penetrative sex is to actually just pause and barely move at all. And like do it where you're facing your partner. You can put your foreheads together or something like this. And then you could, you know, if you're the one sort of quote unquote leading in that moment, you could just say, baby, breathe with me right now or follow my breath or let's breathe together. And then sit there with them and take 10 deep breaths with them, like inside of them. Or if you're, you know, the woman or the guy riding the guy or whatever, like, just yeah, breathe together for like 10 or 20 breaths and do it as an active sort of like, and then make a sound on the exhale <sighs> together and treat it as an actual breathing practice while you're in the moment together. And then notice what happens. Just like notice what happens after doing that 20 times. It can be pretty remarkable, you know, and maybe 10 breaths in, you start to include some micro, micro movements but so often what happens when we get into the sexual experience is we just, bam, go straight back to what we're used to and our normal patterns and our normal go-to things. And to create a pattern interrupt where you actually just pause and breathe together and notice all the subtle sensations, that's going to like clear the way for all kinds of other exploration to happen afterwards. Dude, and I'm just thinking that like for myself and I'm like, man, 10 to 20 breaths is going to be a really long time. And I can definitely imagine like <laughs> the first four to five for like the first time people can do it can be mm. another vulnerable experience because you're like, okay, we're here, we're having sex, like we're just breathing. And then like, is she getting into it? Am I getting into it? And then eventually it's like, yes, you, you're going to sync up and you're both going to be like ridiculously. I'm, I'm assuming that you like really get into it. Um, mm -hmm. That's how I sort of play it out in my mind as, as you were speaking. You can. Yeah, you can really get into it. And then also like noticing the fear that comes up about the possibility of not getting into it. Yeah. Because like that's that's real too. And that can also take you out of the moment. And that can be part of the intention of doing the breath practice too. And sometimes it can be cool to talk about it beforehand. I've done this with my partner before. Like, hey, babe, when we have sex, you know, later today or tomorrow, or whenever, like I want to try just sitting there and doing some breath practice with you right you know, as soon as we, our bodies come together and that way we're on the same page. And if you're both excited about it, you know, then it's like, maybe that's a better context for doing 20 breaths together than just like bringing it up without talking about it, you know, yeah. four or five. Sure. But I think like really the synchronizing of the breath in the sexual experience is an amazing thing to play with, you know, and not going straight into the high genitally focused stimulation type movements. Yeah. What else? What else is there? That's a great one. I think that's absolutely fantastic. I hope whoever's listening right now is like, yep, just sending a text to my partner right now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, next time we have a sex, we are breathing, baby. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. And it's, it's wild. Like, you know, for everybody who's done a Wim Hof type breathwork thing or some sort of activating breathwork practice, like, you know, the sensations that can arise in your body 
after the end of a breath round. Like it's intense, you know? And it's, it's so fascinating if you can bring yourself and your partner brings themselves to this heightened state through breath work while you're also experiencing sexual pleasure. Like that is amazing. That is amazing, amazing stuff. And like, I highly recommend experimenting with that, you know, explore that, experiment it with that in all different kinds of positions. And even then, like not even necessarily during penetrative sex, like while you're, while somebody's going down on you, you know, like that's a cool time to dive into it too. Crazy. Crazy. So what else? Is there anything else that you'd suggest? <laughs> Sorry, I'm just trying to extract all this good stuff from you. Yeah. While you're yeah, at it. I mean, there's so, God, there's so many things. Like another thing you could do is, is to have a sexual experience with your partner and then like agree that you're not going to have penetrative sex at all, either, you know, together. And you're also both not going to have an orgasm. Whoa. It's just an experiment. Like if you're somebody who really wants to explore all the different things you can do in sex, like this is a good thing to try and, and then make a plan of action for how you're going to deal with if you do feel sexually frustrated, you know, like agree that you'll do some physical exercise afterwards or agree that you're going to do like a great thing to do. Honestly, if you're into yoga is if you're going to do this is like be sexual with your partner for 20 minutes and then immediately go into some form of a physically intensive yoga asana practice because that's going to move your, like all that energy and charge that you just built up throughout your whole system and then reevaluate and see what you want to do. Then if you want to go back into sex and have an orgasm of some kind, like go for it. But I could almost guarantee that if you have, you know, if you're sexual for a while and then you go do yoga together, you're going to feel amazing and balanced. And this is going to be like what these older traditions talk about in Taoist sexuality and yogic sexuality it's like you build up this sexual energy, they call it, and then you harness it and you integrate it into your body. And then all of a sudden there's this shimmer in the world. There's this spark, this fire that exists that wasn't quite there before. And, and you've harnessed this and now it like exists within you. This life gives this life giving force that is sexual energy. You know, they see this energy as literally the force of all creation. Like this is where you came from. It's where I came from. We came from this, this force. And if instead of just letting it out, like we, we breathe it up and breathe it in, like it's pretty magical. Dude, I just, I can't believe I've never had the thought beforehand because I love doing hard stuff. Anything that's like mm. difficult. I just, I just, I just find that I have to do it. I don't, know, I don't know what it is. I sort of love overcoming hurdles and then having a reward at the end. I don't know, some yeah. sort of bigger dopamine rush, whatever. <laughs> but, <laughs> but just having that thought of being like, having the conversation with your partner and be like, let's have sex. Let's not penetrate each other and let's both not orgasm either. Immediately mm. in my head, I'm just like, oh my gosh, that would be such an epic experience especially to do <laughs> for each other in terms of just connection because we're talking about that yeah. fire and that edge beforehand there mm -hmm. is going to be nothing else like if you did that with your partner i'm just assuming like for me if i put myself in that position like two hours mm -hmm. later i'm gonna just be looking at her like oh, god damn like jesus like you just have that <laughs> fire for ages right you would um because you've just basically teased each other for a whole sexual experience and then haven't done anything like that'll definitely <laughs> reignite well, so like that so let me interrupt you real quick. So this is an important part of the context too. And this is like a important part of reframing the sexual experience. You said the word teasing as if like, you know, the orgasm is the point of the sexual ah. experience, you know? So like rewiring it. Yeah. Yeah, totally. So rewiring it to like connection and pleasure is the point. Yes. And orgasm could be a fun experience to have, but like taking that out of being the focal point then you start, then you really start to feel the benefits and the impact of creating this charge in your system, you know, and it's, I just want to like catch that little piece. Oh, out. dude, absolutely. And thank you for catching that. My goodness. Cause I'm sure a lot of people are probably thinking the same Then my brain goes, all right, what could I say? Instead of like being a tease, I would say like, I would be more to mo motivated to have a connective experience with her. Is that sort of where I would go instead of using that word? <laughs> Yeah. Instead of having tease to me has a sort of like negative connotation. I mean, you could yeah. use tease in a positively, yep. 
you know, useful way, but like in that context, it's, it feels a little negatively oriented. Yeah. Um, so I'd say like, yeah, I want to have a beautifully connected, pleasurable experience with my lover tonight. That's going to be experimental. I don't know what's going to happen, but I want to do it because I value my growth and I value our sexual connection and we'll just see what happens. You know? Sick. Yeah. I love those words way more. I'm definitely just going to like, just as a little tip of myself, I'm like, whoop, I'm going to try and switch that. And yeah. every time I go to say the word tease, I'm going to change it around to, to something like that as well. And so. yeah. And tease is a fun word. And we, we also okay. use that te- that word tease, but we just make sure we, we tr- make a practice out of not doing it in the context of if one of us does not have an orgasm and a sexual experience, Yeah, you know, which is just, I find fantastic. And as well, totally. I just love to, to just dive in just quickly as well, just to get into like some of the like hard opening stuff that we sort of mm. mentioned because we've tipped on it. Cause we've all been just like, yeah, sex, buttholes. <laughs> like, cool stuff. I've been <laughs> asking all the questions, but um, in terms of like, especially for, for people, sex is one of those experiences that can be super hard opening and mm-hmm. it's supposed to be right. It's supposed to be um, super connecting and hard opening and stuff. What are you can sort be. of, yeah, can be, what are you, what are you sort of, um, like encourage or what are your thoughts around or like your teachings you could say around actual getting really connected, opening your heart and, and being like super vulnerable. (sighs) Man, that is a big, yeah. What could I share in this moment that would be valuable? Um, You know, like I'd say, I just want to give a little nugget of encouragement. Sometimes it can happen that if you get into a sexual experience with your partner where you're both really into it, uh, sometimes emotions can come up. Like, I don't know if you've ever had sex with a person and then they start to cry, you know, and it might not be because anything bad has happened, but just because emotions are there, maybe it's a good thing too. Like this can happen to guys also. And it's more common to happen to women, but I think it would be almost equally as common with men, but like we suppress it. You know, we have this, like most of us have this automatic response where if we start to feel like we're going to cry, we're like, oh shit, better step that down. You know, like don't experience that. That's bad. Even if we're in a completely safe environment, this programming still lives within us from like grade school or if we played on a sports team in high school or whatever. Um, And so like, I'd encourage a, like if that ever happens, like try to go into it, try to see what happens if you cry in the sexual experience and you will be like amazed, you know, if I'd say, if you're in a scenario with somebody that you trust, you know, a longer term partner, like if you're having a one night stand, like maybe try that. I don't know, but the chances are, <laughs> the chances are, are higher that it would backfire with somebody that you don't know, you know, cause not everybody's open to that sort of thing. But if you're with a loving partner, like that could be a beautiful thing to try. And, and also like, I'd say a lot of that honestly comes down to self work and self growth too. Like how deep are you willing to go within yourself to look at your own shit, to look at your own blocks, to look at your own shadows. I remember there's this one exercise I did at a workshop once where they, um, I, I set three pillows down on the ground and a sort of try like an equilateral triangle shape. And one of these pillows Uh, one of these pillows was representative of my heart and another pillow was representative of my penis. And a third pillow was representative of the seat of the observer. So I started off in the seat of the observer. And then when I wanted to, I could move to the seat of my penis or the seat of my heart. And then the exercise was to speak as if I was my penis talking to my heart and then move over to the other pillow and speak to my heart as if I was my penis or like, you know, vice versa, whatever it was that I just said. And that was a really illuminating experience for me, actually, you know, because I realized like when I was, um, let's see if I just drop into it for a second. When, yeah, in that exercise, I realized that my heart actually, when I went and embodied the perspective of my heart, it's, you know, experimental exercise of doing that. I realized like my heart actually wanted more openness and more connection. And it was tired of my penis always kind of like running the show, you know, and going for the next hot thing or the hot sexual position or something like this. And so it illuminated to me that I actually was craving deeper intimacy, 
you know, and in that experience, because of the safeness of the, the exercise uh, that was facilitated, like I was actually able to cry at the longing of my heart, you know, realizing that I wanted a uh, deeper connection there. And it wasn't just, I want a deeper connection, but it was like, I wanted to be open and the pain of being closed really hit me. You know, it's like, oh God, I've got all these programs from society, from my dad, from everything about like shutting emotions down. And that sucks. Ouch. There's a whole well in here, you know, and it was the grief around that. So that was a really cool exercise that you or anybody that's listening could, could try on your own, you know, just like set up some little mild background music and three pillows and just do an experiment. And, uh, that, yeah, that was fascinating. That was fascinating. Yeah. I can imagine that just be just like crazy. Even just having that conversation with yourself and thinking about it to see where, how everything's sort of connected. I can see be extremely beneficial. And that's also, cause we've been talking about, um, um, a lot of, a lot of all of this stuff, but it's also said it's not, it's also not a bad thing as well. If you do want to have, if the moment arises to have rough, crazy, super, epic sex as well hundred so. <laughs> percent yeah absolutely yeah and so uh, that's a really important point to clarify like yeah. i'm not here trying to say that everybody should always be like doing meditative breath practices in sex and crying and having these deep emotional experiences which is fantastic but I'm saying, <laughs> which which are amazing but if if your default and if the only thing you're comfortable with is hard fucking then i would say yeah it's time to reevaluate and do some other stuff you know, and then when you start to explore all these other realms, then you can intentionally choose to go into the, like, I'm going to hold you down and choke you while I fuck you type sexual experience, which is super hot and amazing and can be just as spiritual as the sitting there meditating together kind of experience. If it's done with intention and awareness. For sure. Yeah. And I just think just because like, I believe that's sort of how everything's set up at the moment. We're in super hyper masculine, like world, the Western society is like a bit more masculine than what it is feminine. So it's like, as far as default goes, like we didn't have anyone like as just speaking of a men and girls, like we don't really have anyone teach us about sex. It's not like, I remember my dad did give me one really good tip when I was young. He was just like, I was like, dad, what do I do about sex? And he was like, just talk to them. Like just talk the whole time and i was like that has paid off for me extremely well but besides that <laughs> like but besides that um i haven't been taught anything else i have to like yeah. you know you have to in intentionally have to go out there and search and research to figure out there's no one like you know there's no tribal leaders that are like you know sex is super important so as a guy you just some it's very easy to be for default just to be hard fucking so totally. i think that's like that's such an important thing to make that there is because what we've touched on in this podcast is there is so many other things. Like there is so much other stuff. There's a whole new world out there in terms yeah. of like the sexual experience, man. So yeah, yeah thanks. For it sharing. is for sure. And yeah, like just to acknowledge the context that we live in, like it's something that I feel general frustration about. And like, it's why I'm doing the work that I'm doing because nobody out there in a position of leadership is talking about healthy sexuality. And when I say position of leadership, I mean like big, you know, well-known person to most people in a country or, or something like that. Politicians aren't doing it. Sports figures aren't doing it. Entertainment figures aren't doing it. And these are the people with the biggest audiences, you know, generally speaking. And so we're in a society, in a context where like nobody addresses this stuff and everybody thinks about it constantly. <laughs> yeah. And we're sold sex by advertisements constantly. And there's this entire thing that's feeding us fucked up images and ideas around sex, which is porn, which is one of the biggest industries in the world. And it's just like, we're all fucking backwards. You know, like we need good education around this. We need somebody to say, hey, this is actually possible. Hey, these are some other options. Like, hey, you don't just have to fuck like jackrabbits. And in fact, it's actually more pleasurable to not do that. <laughs> dude and you know? just massive appreciation and gratitude like towards you for getting out there putting in the like the real hard work doing the work living in it as an example and sharing this message with as much enthusiasm as what you do as well as being able to take the hits and enjoy the the um you know the the, the pleasure with it as well man it's just oh like good on you man absolutely like most respect to you ever thanks yeah, I appreciate that a lot. And and ultimately, like I'm here 
previously because I used to like struggle intensely with premature ejaculation and sexual anxiety. And I would even avoid women that I was attracted to because I was afraid of potentially maybe having a sexual experience with them and being the guy who came too fast, you know, this is years ago. And like, that was traumatic, you know, in many ways. And I, I spent a long time researching this stuff just for my own personal improvement my own personal improvement and, and how to actually have a healthy sex life. And through the process discovered Taoist sexuality and Montauk Chia's stuff and studied, found yogic sexuality and all these different books and found some things that said, Hey, maybe if you don't ejaculate all the time, your life might be better. And I started to notice that that actually was true. And I started to make more money in my business before I even started being a sex educator. I was a professional photographer and filmmaker in the business realm you know, in the business marketing, et cetera. And like through the practice of semen retention and being intentional with my sexuality, like I started to massively increase the amount of money I was making through negotiation tactics, through like just showing up with more presence and fire in conversations with people and like owning myself worth more, you know? And like, I was also a talented person who put in the work to do the craft well, but like it all helped make it happen. And eventually, long story short, some of my friends were like, Taylor, you talk about this shit all the time. You should probably make a career out of it because it's all you want to talk about. <laughs> yeah, okay, and, done. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm like, you know, you're right. I look at my bookshelf. There are zero books on it about photography. It's all about sex and relationship and masculinity and spirituality and, and et cetera, you know, so here we are. And I, you know, I'm kind of the person I wish I had when I was 22. Oh man, yeah, which I think you can be extremely proud of, man. Some of the stuff that you've mentioned, man, you put in the work and you're extremely present as well. Like even on this podcast, I notice that you've been extremely present, which has been fantastic. Um, man, I have like a ton of more questions. I might have to get you on again because I'd really like to dive into premature ejaculation, but I'm sure you've yeah. got a whole bunch of stuff to do. People listening are like, oh, you want to keep listening more, but this is going on for so long. <laughs> so before we wrap up, man, where can people best find you? Yeah. Awesome question. And just side note. Yeah. Maybe we should do a round two on premature ejaculation. Well, I think huge we should topic. definitely huge, huge topic. topic. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm on Instagram at Taylor Clark Johnson, and you can find me on my website too, www.taylorjohnson.life. And I have a bunch of YouTube videos out there and just search for Taylor Johnson sex coach on YouTube. And I'm, I'm sure I'll pop up. If I don't pop up, then I'll need to do some more work on that. <laughs> no, and yeah, be. man. Thank you so much for, for having me on too. It's great talking with you. I appreciate your presence and your just like zest for life as well. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, man, I feel like I have another ally on the other side of the world just in terms of just, yeah, like seizing life by the reins and being like, fuck yeah, we're alive on a planet. Let's live this life to the best, you know, that we're capable of because it's short, you know, and here we are now. That's what I'm trying to do, man. And that's like, it's, it's part of living the good life. And it's, I couldn't like preach it anymore because it's just so fantastic, right? And by the way, anyone who's listening, all of Taylor's stuff is going to be linked below so you can get that. If you want to find him, you just go down the links and you'll find him with all the stuff. So, man. Awesome. Appreciate you, brother. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, everyone listening too. Peace. <laughs>